you're in a very enviable position compared to a lot of students who have. Well, hello, Sophie. Hello. How, How are, are you? you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. I, yeah. Get, where are you? Where are you at right now? I am in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Oh wow! So it's I bet it's pretty cold up there. It's pretty cold, yeah. We're getting some snow right now, but it's it's pretty pretty, so that's good. Good, 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 good. Well, uh, I want you to have an opportunity to tell us a little bit about yourself before we jump into uh, into looking at the mapped uh, stuff for you. So, why don't you give us a little bit about about who Sophie is? Sure. So, I graduated high school from Minnesota um, in 2016. After that, I went to college for my undergrad and I graduated in 2020, right in May. Um, Then I went to a school in Rhode Island. Um, And then after that, I moved home and I worked a little bit over the summer um, and kind of tried to find a job that I could utilize my my gap years with and um that led me to the upper peninsula of michigan so now i'm here working as a medical assistant Um, i'm also doing a postdoc program that's a one-year program so i'll be done in the summer um and then i'm planning to take the mcat in april and apply in may so that's where i'm at right now okay yeah. Okay. Good. So where did you go to college? I went to Providence College. Yeah, I'm familiar with uh with Providence College. I've been to Providence before and uh lovely lovely little city. I, I uh liked it a whole lot. And yeah. uh so yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. Yeah, it's great. And where are you where where are you doing the postback program at? It's online through Michigan State. Awesome. And how's that going? It's going good. Um, I'm, it's only um, a total of four classes, and I'm taking two right now, and then one next semester and one over the summer. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Now, what, what was your major in, uh, in college? Yeah, so I was a dual um, degree student. I did a BS in biology and a BA in psychology. And then I minored in mathematics and I did um, a neuroscience certificate that we had. It was like a program. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So you're a busy, busy person. Yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> I, I found it difficult to pick one thing to to focus my time on. Gotcha. Cool. 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 Well, that's awesome. So you grew up in Minnesota, mm-hmm. or should I say, do I do I say it, Minnesota? Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, both. Is are that great. right? <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> Minnesota. <laughs> 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 Uh, that's wonderful. Okay, well let's uh, let's look at um, mapped and kind of see what we have here. Um, well, first we're going to look at the GPA um, graph, and uh, what we see here is a uh, cumulative GPA of three point two four and a science GPA of three point one eight. Uh, we do see a um, uh, a little bit of an upward trend, particularly when we look at semester by semester uh, over the course of time. Um, and you said you graduated 2020, correct? Yep. Okay, cool. And um, so it seems like that your trajectory in your last several years or I guess the last several semesters was, was improving. Is that, is that accurate to say? Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. Okay. Started off a little rocky and then it continued to get better as you went along. Yeah. I think adjusting from high school, I think everyone probably struggled with that, but 
um, I definitely took my time in, in adjusting. And then once I figured out how to, um, sorry, I'm just going to look at the, at this. Once I figured out yeah, kind of what I was, what I was doing and, um, like how to study in college and also, you know, later in, in my later years, I got to take classes that I really connected with. So then that, I think that motivated me to do a lot better too. Good. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for clicking on that detail. I think that really does give us a much better picture. And particularly when we look, keep going down a little bit so we can look at that class standing uh, GPA. So scroll down a little bit more. And uh, yeah, so that really gives us a good sense of um, the, the science GPA as it looks and uh, the, the upward trend there. So that's awesome. Um, so you, okay. you kind of got your footing, in other words, in, in, and things are going well in the post back program, I take it, and, and that's also a very good sign. Yeah, things are going really well, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. Um, great. Uh, so let's look, go back to your dashboard, if you could. And mm -hmm. um, let's look at that again. So, so GPA wise, let me just, let me just say, you know, I, I, I feel, I feel strongly that uh, you're doing the right things in terms of obviously the improvement in the last uh, three or four semesters of, of your college experience in Providence. And now uh, with the, you know, added to that, what you're doing at the, in the, in the Michigan state uh, post back program, I, I'm very encouraged by that. And I think that will, obviously uh, means something in terms of what medical schools are looking for in, ter in terms of academics, at least. So that's great. Okay, great. Um, let's go over to your activity hours. And uh, the graph there uh, kind of shows us a little bit, but we're going to look at the tab. Good. Excellent. And so we we'll want to look at this uh, pretty carefully and see what you've been doing over the course of time. And uh, what I see is uh, you must like chemistry, so you're a TA in chemistry. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I liked chemistry so a lot. That's and good. I, yeah. And so now you're working as a medical assistant, and you've gotten already, you know, almost 500 hours of of experience through that. And my guess is that you're learning a lot doing that. Oh yes. It's actually been really amazing and I didn't expect it to be such a good fit for me. And I, I really wasn't expecting it to like just be perfect for introducing me into medicine in the way that it has. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, then you've you looks like you've got quite a bit of uh, volunteer um, uh, volunteer experience, uh, both in terms of at the Methodist Hospital. Um, I'm guessing that is was that in Providence or in Minnesota? That was in Minnesota. I did that um, during my senior year of high school, and then a few summers during my college career when I was at home too. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And then um, I guess a temperature screener was during COVID. Yeah. Yeah. That was my job over the summer until I moved to Michigan. Yeah. And, and, and tell me, tell me a little bit more about that. I bet that was kind of interesting work. Yeah, um, it was interesting. Um, I definitely was looking for employment, and I, it was really difficult. Obviously, with COVID, most people weren't hiring. Um, and I kind of found that through, like, a temp agency. And I thought, well, it's not exactly what I want to do, but it's at least it's still related to healthcare. So um, I kind of talked with some people, and they were saying, you know, like it'll look good that you were that you were at least doing something during COVID and not just like sitting at home. So I was excited that I got to do that, um, and it was definitely an odd job for me. And 
um, had some weird hours and, and weird people that I worked with, but it was, it was fun. And it was really, I was thankful to have a job during that time. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's wonderful. Uh, let's screen, let's, um, scan on down in terms of those experiences, uh, toward the bottom and, and see what else is there. Um, if you could, this is everything. Oh yeah. Tell me about the clinical experience at clinic Esperanza. Oh, okay. So that was, um, a volunteer internship that I did for one semester during my, um, junior year in college and that was in Providence um so it's kind of very similar to what I do now as a medical assistant I was doing intake and patients vitals things like that um and it was a primarily Spanish-speaking um clinic and it was a free clinic so I don't speak any Spanish but it was it was quite an experience trying to communicate with the patients and pretty like reassuring to me and and made me made me look at the medical field and like just it helped me understand like I need to ask questions often and and when to ask for help because I I couldn't communicate with a lot of the patients yeah 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 that's that's awesome uh is there a second page to this uh uh, activities list? No, this is everything that I've logged so far. Okay. 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 Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's great. Well, it looks like to me, you've got uh, quite a bit of clinical experience. Um, so that's a, a real plus on your side, uh, both in terms of, you know, you've got your paid experience now, but also some volunteer experiences and, and, and you've got, you know, conglomerated all together. That's, that's quite a few hours that, so I think that, you know, you're, you're definitely on the plus side in terms of uh, the clinical experiences uh, that you've had and that you're continuing to get as a, as a medical assistant now. And so that's awesome. That's really, uh, you're, you're in a very enviable position compared to a lot of students who have really been quite restricted because of COVID. Right. Right. I'm very thankful to have that position so awesome. I found and yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's really great. Um, so now in terms of your timeline, uh, if we could go back to the dashboard uh, one more time, uh, mm-hmm. your timeline, you suggested that you were really um, looking at uh, uh, taking the MCAT for your first uh, attempt next April. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And what are you doing to prepare for the MCAT? So starting um, right after the holidays, as soon as the new year begins, I'm beginning a course, like a prep course, probably through, um, I forget the name of it, but I'm going to start that and then do like a three or four month timeline with studying and then aim to take it in April. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you are taking a prep prep class. Yes, I am. Okay. Good. And that's a that's an online thing. Yeah, I believe so. It's not a live online okay. course, but it's online videos and things. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think so you have you, you really have at this point no experience with the MCAT even in terms of any diagnostic exams or anything. So you're kind of um, so you'll start that in January probably, and and then continue that through the the most of the spring until you get to the to to the actual exam in April. And uh, but I think you, you've got a good plan in terms of. Uh, of uh, taking prep class and studying for it in that way. Now, how many classes are you taking in the post program next spring as well? Just one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that'll give you a little bit of extra time uh, to, uh, cause you're, you're still going to be working. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. And you're work you're working full time. Yes. 
Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. So, you know, all in all, what, what I see here, um, Sophie is an incomplete picture with a lot of pluses. Um, and, and so my, 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 am I ready conclusion is going to be a, a yellow light. So I okay. talk about this sometimes in terms of green, green light, red light and yellow light. And my, my, my feeling for you is definitely a yellow light. Uh, and, and the yellow is because there's an incomplete picture here. Uh, right. We don't really know what the MCAT's going to show. I think, as I said before, in terms of your experiences, uh, you really, there's a slam dunk there in terms of, of what you've done uh, in term in healthcare, both volunteer as well as, um, as well as paid experiences. And my guess is you're going to have a lot to tell in your application from those experiences. And so that's a plus uh, in the, you, you've gone through a lot of improvement in terms of uh, the GPA stuff over the course of the, um, uh, you know, over the course of your, your last, particularly the last several semesters of your, of your, experience in Providence, and then uh, with the uh, post back classes that you're taking now, um, hopefully they'll be going well and you'll, you'll really, uh, you know, kind of really show that you can do the work. Um, so what I'd like to see is if we go back to the, to the map and uh, look at your, do you have in there any, uh, uh, over on the left uh, navigation bar, the med schools, have you selected any that you're really interested in that you really want to apply to or thinking about applying to? Yeah, so this is kind of difficult to do because I really thought I might need to wait till I got an MCAT score to see where I should shoot for. So these mm -hmm. are more based on location of where I would like to be, but I think once I get that sure. MCAT score, I'd, I'd be able to narrow it down more and and even find more schools. Yeah, I agree with that. I think uh, I think waiting and you know you'll see by next May what uh, what that MCAT score is going to look like, and and that'll I, I agree that that'll kind of dictate a little bit about schools that you that you're interested in. I like the idea. From my, from what I can see here, that you're that you're going to be applying broadly, uh, both MD and DO. I think that's a, a very good thing, and um, uh, I think uh, you know applying both in terms of schools in the state that you you know were raised in, Minnesota, as well as uh, Michigan State, since you've got a connection in Michigan now. Uh, good idea. Um, so I like the idea that you're looking pretty broadly at a variety of different schools. And uh, that I think that's going to be a really good, good thing for you. Yeah. Okay. So that's awesome. Um, yeah. So I, I definitely think that um, you're, you're on the right track. I, I definitely think you're on the right track. Uh, definitely keep up the good work in terms of your, the courses that you're taking uh, in the post -back program, uh, really focus in on that MCAT uh, studying, studying for the um, uh, in the spring, uh, yeah. along with the the continuing excellent work that you're doing there uh, as an MA, and uh, and then just you know what you'll do is you'll kind of see uh, in the in the spring what what things look like. And yeah. uh, as uh, as a result of the MCAT score. And so I would say I definitely think that applying next year is not uh, out of the question. Uh, I think some mm -hmm. of it's going to be dictated a little bit by the uh, by the you know results of your MCAT. And uh, but I, I definitely think that you're 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 thinking about it in all the right ways. And so keep up the good work and and keep you know pushing forward and uh, keeping your motivation high. That's a very important thing. And, and hopefully your work at, uh, as a medical assistant now is really motivating uh, oh, to yeah. really, really push this. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. It's been yeah. really good. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Well, you're, so, you're super welcome. Please keep in touch with us and let us know how things are going for you. And uh, and uh, we, we'll be interested to, to see, see how things uh, progress.